On tonight's show, we have Ned Moran, an unbelievable 12-year-old blues prodigy. Will tries talking to some of the world's best bass players at Bass Day in Melbourne. And we also have three legends of the Aussie music industry, Field C and Mason, in Music Land Tonight. We actually got the original house band in the, on the stage tonight. We, we do. Have. We got Leon, Emilio, Julian, and Max on keys. Well done, boys. Good to see you back. You know the beauty of these guys is that even if you add all of their ages up, <laughs> right? You're still, still older. You're still <laughs> older. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> even if you added our three ages up, you're still older. <laughs> hey, the camera's on, guys. Oh, hello. Hello. hello, hello. Well, well, he's a clan tonight, guys. <laughs> all right. So, how are we? Good. Now, some cool stuff that's been, uh, that been trolling the internet over the last week. Yes. Um, found this awesome um, young guy that's building these pedals at the moment. So he's getting old vintage Game Boys oh. and actually turning them into distortion pedals or chorus pedals um, with the actual full screen and everything that works. That's awesome. Oh, these really? things are absolutely amazing. I just thought, oh, a bit of young Australian they... ingenious people. Aren't they a little bit small? Ingenious. No. I suppose a pedal, yeah. No, it's the old... But Hold on. For, for, hey, it's hold not on. old for, hey, no, for no. my gener hold on for my generation. Oh, my generation was Atari. Yeah. <laughs> I thought your generation would be earlier than that, even pinball or <laughs> those old bowling we'll, games. No, we'll play stones. Uh, what was it? <laughs> Marbles. Marbles. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you lost them? A long time ago, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> um, no, that'd be interesting to watch. To see. To see. Yeah. Um, one of the guys actually brought them into our shop the other week. Oh, really? And, um, Thought to myself, Jesus, how good's this? Like, just something out of the box. I just thought, yep. absolutely brilliant. So, I mean, here we are in an industry where we want to try to get people away from playing those games, and there's this guy who actually gets them and then turns them into pedals. Yeah, but that's the best way to make them play the game, or play not play the games, play an instrument. <laughs> to get my kids. To hey, gigs. can you switch over to the Game Boy though? I don't think that'd it be could. impressive. That'd be very impressive. So if that guy's watching at home, please <laughs> set that up. That'd be set it up. the coolest thing ever. During the break, or so I was switching over to Game Boy Play. Play. <laughs> So you'll have these all these young guitarists Green sitting there laying on, the, laying on the floor of the stage, going, "Look!" <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know what Game Boy is, mate. They don't Nintendo and a PS4 yeah. or something like that. It's like an old Sony Xbox. Walkman. Xbox. Xbox, Xbox, Xbox. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, be interesting to know if a house band even knows. Do you know what a cassette tape is? Oh, you do? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they you do? do. Yeah. Do you know what a record player is? That's a big CD. <laughs> you know what a yeah, big, you know what a big CD. CD? In Will's days, you know what a gramophone is? <laughs> <laughs> what about the laser disc? That the laser, oh, the laser disc. The laser disc. The laser disc. Yeah. Awesome what about Tascam? Awesome invention for about 30 seconds. Tascam reel to reel. I had one of those. Love the Tascam reel to reel. Yeah, they were cool, weren't they? What was before those? The magnetic... Multi-track tapes that they were using in the recording those, studios. Those big thick ones. The big yeah. thick ones. What are they called? A real to real. No. A no. No, no. No, the A dat was after. Came that, came, that came out. Yeah. Was it a? What was it? A two, two inch. inch. Two inch. That's how wide it was. I got yeah, that. I was going to say I wouldn't be going out <laughs> promoting that. <laughs> that was that was way before my time. But that's a long time ago. Your time wasn't it? The um, the stone and the chisel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, now. We were trolling the internet as well, just trying to look up some really cool music videos that we could. <laughs> Thank God you went with that. That we could possibly um, is that put the on. We, is that the one we left Will in charge this of? This is the one we left Will in charge <laughs> of. Um, <laughs> just oh what were God, you thinking? please. <laughs> All right, folks. I know this is a music show, but I don't know how the hell Will got this through. But he missed the I memo. actually put it on the group as a joke. <laughs> oh, you changed it. Good man. <laughs> All right, so our director Tyrone actually changed the clip. We, thank God. We do have quality control. <laughs> Under instruction. <laughs> but I'm excited about tonight's show, by the way. I'm very excited Same. about tonight's show. Um, go on. Young Ned. Young Ned, yes. 
12 years old. Fantastic guitar. Such a blues And player. singer. Oh, and singer. I was and shocked. Singer. Through yeah. sound check. I yeah. Like, what a great guitar. And then he sings as well. I was like, really? Yeah. I'm just yeah. giving up. He's got the look too, the cap and all. So oh, yeah. Looking forward like to that. He's been so been around for a yeah. long time. Yeah. Old soul. On old soul. No, and old young soul. Soul. That's what I think. Old soul on a new guitar. I still think he looks like a little young John Mayer. Yes. You reckon? Yes. Really? yes. Yeah. Thank you. Every time I see him, I just think of the movie Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've also got... Phil C. and Mason. Oh. Yeah. Such a sound yeah. check we heard before. Oh, no. Harmonies. Fant- oh, the harmonies. Harmonies. If you love harmonies, this that is the band yes. to see. Sorry? Was that them yelling out Rory in perfect unison? They actually, they were, they they were, actually said it. They the actually said it. I blame this guy for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the first time I actually felt like I should respond because it sounded so great. Normally it's just really getting in my ears. Mm. No, nah, looking forward to the, talking to the guys and especially listening to them. So. I think yep. definitely listening to them. Yeah, I was stunned at uh, Soundcheck, mate. I really was. It was kind of cool. All yeah. right, we're going to wind up from there. We are getting a wind up. We're going to go... Actually, away. we're going to introduce him. Tyrone, yeah. come over Tyrone. here. Tyrone. Tyrone, come on. Tyrone, Tyrone. Come here, Tyrone. Yeah, Show us your gun. Show us the guns, Tyrone. <laughs> Get him out. Oh, there we go. Why do you Tyrone's Tyrone. a director. Hey, you introduce me every show. Yeah, every yeah we show. are. Every <laughs> show. <laughs> show. At it. least people know who we're looking at and talking to. <laughs> uh, you know, he's put face recognition. He just follows his face when he comes on and then off. <laughs> We're all, in a, we're all a blur, <laughs> so it's kind of good. Uh, all right, who we got so now? Who we got now, Tyrone? We got, we got young Oh, we got Ned. Ned. Yep. All right. Let's shuffle across. <laughs> Now, Ned's no, 12 right. years young. Or do you want to use old? Young. Oh, young. Young? I prefer that. 12 years young. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Ned's, Ned's a blues player. Now, if, when you hear Ned play later, you sit there and go, are you 12 years old or are you a lot older than that? Because <laughs> the way he hits those, those notes, you just, it's like, you know, I saw, I saw um, uh, what's his name, performing B.B. Um, King. And when he played, you could hear that he was playing that note. And it's a bit like you. When you play, you know that you're playing. Yep. So, yeah, oh, which is thank awesome. You. Hey, you just got back from a, um, a, a, a gig on the weekend, didn't you? Yeah, uh, the Docklands Blues The Docklands Blues Festival. Blues Fest. Yeah. How'd that go? Oh, that was uh, really good. I got uh, quite a big crowd there. And, I mean, lots of people appreciate uh, blues music. That's the reason they went. So it was nice to see a lot of people who loved blues and like listening to it so was yeah. that the biggest crowd you've ever played to oh uh, probably not because no i went on 3aw it's not really a crowd but you know just take it take whatever you can get <laughs> <laughs> how was that with 3aw oh uh, it was like quite just shove you in a room and like just start the show like not much Preparation or who you want? Who were you on with? Um, Grubby and Dee Dee. Grubby and Dee Dee. Yeah. Where were they cool? Yeah. Is yeah. he grumpy? Oh uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Grubby. Grubby. Oh Grubby. Oh, I thought you said grumpy. 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 <laughs> he wasn't on with the Hello. seven dwarfs, mate. <laughs> <laughs> now you also you you play with the Melbourne Blues Association uh, Appreciation Society, don't you? Yeah. How's that? Oh, it's quite fun. I go I go on Tuesday down to the. Bowls Club and I do a jam. It's Where, where's that? Which Bowls uh, Club? Flemington Bowls Club. Flemington Bowls yeah. Club. Yep. Yeah. And what do you guys do down there? Oh, it's just like 15 minutes, whatever you want to do, blues, like a bit of country, like. Just, so yeah. there's already musos performing. Yeah. And you just get up and yeah, it's and a play feature act, and you just get up. Yeah. Cool. So, um, do you have a big crowd down there? We can fit a fair few people in there. Um, Is it usually yeah. full? Yeah, it's usually full. Well, they need more. So you better hurry up and go down to the Flemington, the Flemington Bowls Club, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's on the corner of um, Racecourse Road and yeah. um, is it Ballarat Road? Uh, I don't know. It's around that area yeah, there. It's, it's near the old, the, the old um, 
Yeah, near the race course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to do cross promotion, Will? I'm doing cross promotion. Now, you do a lot of busking as well. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Whereabouts do you busk? Oh, like Hosier Lane and uh, South Bank. Hosier Lane, that's the one with all of the um, graffiti, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Have you got your spot? Um, yeah, usually. Yeah? Like, yeah. Do you have so to chase people down the lane for your spot? Oh, no, it's not no. that crowded there, which is really lucky because um, there's quite a few tourists coming down, so they just throw you money. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm going to remember that. Yeah. Anyone doing anything on the weekend? <laughs> don't tell, anyone. Don't text text tell too many people you're in cash. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, we should go down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some money. So you, you've done a lot of festivals and stuff as well, yeah. haven't you? What, what, what's some of your big festivals that you've done? Oh, I did the... It wasn't... Yeah, I did the Yarraville Festival. I did, I uh, su sort of supported at the Achuka uh, Moama Blues Festival. And then, I can't remember what other festivals I've done. Yeah. I think those are the main ones. Yep. And the Docklands ones. So. And are you performing with a band in those? Or are you performing no. just everything, like, solo? Everything solo. So, so tonight yeah. when you're performing, with the, you'll be performing with the band. Yeah, which How's is feel, good. How does it yeah. feel playing with the band? Oh, it's, it's a lot more... Um, it's more fun and it's more easy than trying to do everything yourself and having to, if you make a mistake, it's really, like, it will be pretty bad, but if you're in a band, it's not as, I, I, as bad. I heard the band was a bit nervous playing with you today, actually, when they were sound checking. They were I heard the drummer nervous. make a couple of mistakes up there tonight. <laughs> Leon, you didn't, did you? <laughs> Is he so, on the phone? <laughs> now, did, did you notice that we've actually tried to get the youngest band for you so that you all fit in together? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, these you guys... You looked out of place with us. Huh? Yeah, well, you <laughs> looked very out of place with us. <laughs> he would have been up on stage ready to go. Come on, what are you guys doing? Oh, I'm getting there slowly. <laughs> on the walker. <laughs> now, Ned, Ned and the grandpapa. <laughs> how, long, how long have you been playing? About four years. Four years. And who's, who's been your main influence with that? Like, who's been your main teacher? Oh, uh, as in... Learning. Yeah, learning. Um, yeah. This guy named Charlie Pinnell. He's, Charlie Pinnell. He's, Charlie a, Pinnell. Yeah, he's an old guy. He's really great. Um, <laughs> 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 Do you want us to edit that out later? Or? <laughs> I think your lessons are going to get a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> and more expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and so you, you really look up to... Yeah? Yes. Do you call him Mr. Pennell? No, I just say Charlie. Yeah? Yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, and have you had any other teachers? Yeah, I have um, Julia Mamone. She does, like, more theory and stuff like that. Yep. With me, which is pretty fun. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And who's your influence? Who's something, something um, like a guitarist that you listen nowadays, to? Nowadays, definitely Guthrie Govan. Yep. Um, I mean, I still listen to like Robert Johnson and Muddy Waters, but I love Guthrie Govan a lot. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. And you don't listen to anyone else? Oh yeah, I do. Because before There's you were doing some finger tapping, so do you listen yeah. to Steve Vai <laughs> and stuff like that as well? Yeah, I I don't. It's not. I don't really like yeah. that sort of music that much. I just. I sort of just try to adapt the techniques from there because yep. I think, like, they might not fit in blues, but they could be useful later on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How old is he again? <laughs> <laughs> just He's refresh my memory. Old. Apparently yeah. older than us. <laughs> <laughs> Ned, now, when you, all the way back when you first started playing, what was your first guitar? Oh, I was and like who a... got it for you? Obviously, mum and dad or...? Yeah, my... Uh, I can't remember, but it was a <laughs> it was so a nylon ago. string. It was, it was Santa Claus. a nylon string. Yeah, it was like a fifty dollar nylon string from our local music shop that I don't um, go to. Be the what, what, made, what made you start picking up a guitar? Like what, uh, ma what made honest, you get into blues? I to be honest, I just I saw a guitar in a window and I wondered what it was, but then I sort of latched on when I like heard the guitar and then heard like. Amazing guitarists, yeah. But what made you get into blues? Out of all genres of music, Ooh, it's in the kids, soul. It's, it's in the soul. soul. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, exactly. Yeah. Do your parents at home listen to it, or is oh, it just they? Too? They do now. Oh, they do now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, your mum and dad are pretty, pretty supportive. Yes. So, supportive. yeah, and with um, I, I heard a whisper that you got into VCAS. Is that true? Wow. Yeah. 
So it's you nice went. That, that's pretty hard to get in there. That's yeah. pretty good. You got high standards. For that. Yes. So, yeah. Now, with 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 that, um, how was your audition for that? Oh, it was very nerve wracking, but it was it was sort of hard to go up um, and just like sit in front of people that you know are just like music experts. They they've been in the industry for so long. They know lots of stuff about music, so, and then having to play something that they might not like or they might like, so it's What a did you play? Oh, well, I had to do a jazz piece, so I just did Blue Boss off. I mean, everyone yeah. knows that. That's a um, cool tune. And then I did one of my original songs, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just did some, like, technical work. Yeah. Awesome. Now, I think, um, please, everyone, give Ned a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Um, Ned's going to be back very, very shortly, um, obviously, to perform a song. What song are you performing? Uh, it's an original song. It's called Mysteries to Me. Mysteries to Me. Ah, excellent. Yeah. Wow. So, guys, make sure you stick around for that. Now, Will, yes. you headed over to Base Day. I did. Are we going to see a bit of a clip of you at Base Day? Yes. <laughs> I, th I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. It, was, it was fun. I mean, I, I, I interviewed a, a, whole bunch, a whole bunch of bass players. Um, there was, I mean, there were quite a few. There was um, Jeremy Allsop. There was um, Joe Creighton. Um, then we also interviewed um, uh, Igor Zavedra, who we're going to be showing that later on. Yes. And, and right now we're going to show Bernardo and Dean who actually supported Igor Zavedra throughout his whole tour. You, you have a very good pronunciation of Igor Zavedra. Oh, Igor Zavedra. I to learn it. I speak the Spanish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Very Thank you very much. Well. All right, Toro. So now we throw you the... Yeah, go. Hi, everyone. Here I am with Bernardo Soler and Dean Godois. Got yeah. Got Got so now these guys are, t uh, are doing a lot of gigs around town, doing some amazing stuff together playing. Um, but aside from that, you've also been involved in organising Igor Zavedra that's to come out. Yeah, that's correct. Um, last time we saw him at Eastgate here, right, guys, he's just like giving like a master class and I think it's not enough. You know, I said to him, are you coming back here in Australia? And he said, I don't know because um, no one is going to organize this. So I suggest to him, I will do it. I'll organize this one, and, and it's going to happen this year as well. So it happens. So we start uh, performing at the Halls Cup Jazz Festival, and then when, when he start performing there, everyone watches, like, open our eyes. Wow, I didn't know that the bass can do this. Like, yeah. So everyone just, like, open up, and then you start thinking, okay, it's not only a single note for bass player. It has to be yeah. like Igor. Yeah. Fantastic. Dean, how you been? Very good, very well. You can see I actually got Igor to sign my LTD ears. Ah. He the Phil Jones bass cabs. He was actually using my rig for yesterday's masterclass and the gig before that at the Chilean restaurant. So big shout out to, I'll, I'll jump to the gear section. Hello. Big shout out to the Phil Jones bass guys and, and EGM for, for giving us that amazing gear. And his eight string bass sounds gorgeous through that. Just juicy and it's a passive bass. It, it's, it, it just defies all of the things that we've been told bass should be. It does, does a four string bass. It also does everything else below and above that range. So it's great having him here. And as Bernardo and myself, as the duo opening for him on, on all of his gigs, it, it's, uh, you know how nerve wracking that can be. Because he won't be in the background talking, he'll be analyzing what you're doing because he, his love for the music, it just, it never ends, it never dies. He won't sleep because his, you know, the, the music's always going on in his head. So, mm -hmm. so just to be around a dude of that stature, um, he'll hate me saying this, but we look up to him like the guru. So, but there's just so much to learn from someone at that level. Now, I wanna ask you guys, seeing that you were performing with Igor, right? Mm -hmm. Before you got on, because I've asked everybody else the same question, what was your mindset before you got on? Because a lot of musos don't understand, like, I mean, I was talking to the guys about doing shows in big arenas and stuff like that. Your arena is a different thing altogether because it's specialists and stuff like that that are coming to that. So how did you guys put your mindset before you performed, before you got up for Eagle? Well, yes, of course I was nervous because, you know, you've got a dude there who's He's able to analyze a whole amount of data in literally a split second and take it in and, and, and then 
you know, form an opinion in a way and then inform you about it afterwards. So the things that I've learned, and they're not just tips and tricks, they go to a, almost a foundation level of what worked for him and I can take them away with, with, with me. Um, that one particular gig we did and I was so nervous and I actually said that to him. He was in the front row watching me. I said, man, I'm so nervous. And the previous day we'd had a bit of a sit down lesson and he said, I have to do his accent, he's gonna kill me. He said, what, after four hours of sitting down and talking? I said, yeah, I'm more nervous now because now I'm equipped with the tools, you know, <laughs> and I should be able to get over whatever it is, an arpeggio or whatever. But at the same time, it's just inspiring to have a dude there that, you know, his music we've studied and we've stolen bits from, and he said, steal away. How did you approach it, Bernardo? Yeah, yeah. As, as Dean said, and like, he, he was so nervous, exactly the same, you know, we're human beings, you know. So when you're playing in front of the maestro, and I said, I'm not a bass player, but, you know, like, we have the same feeling, you know, when you perform in front of audience, you get this a little bit of nervous, because I was trained myself, like, at home, I always record myself, you know, like, pretend like I'm in front of them thousand people so I get used to that one so when I it comes to the performance it's just like normal thing to me so I'll just put my heart and express close my eyes and deliver the music and my my main goal is to, to, to touch these people through my playing so that's yeah. that's always yeah. happened to me yeah. so when Igor after the performance he said man you know this is you are the first guitar player that I've heard that's kind of like, that's got a like nice and warm sound. Oh, I said, thank you for that. You know, like it's a good compliment, you know? And then he said, you know, like, uh, what, did you, what do you do? You know, I, I'm not gonna show you my secret, but I explained, <laughs> but I explained to him how I use my finger through, through the strings. Yeah. yeah. And wow, well, everyone has got this different kind of uh, Sorry. And when and when he was telling you, Dean's going, What about me? It isn't fair. I've had enough now. I want my share, right? Yeah, but mine was in tune. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, thanks guys. Thank thanks you. for coming in. Awesome. And enjoy the rest of the awesome. day. Awesome. Yeah. Catch you later. Thanks, thanks. See you later. Yeah, Bye. That was pretty cool. That was very cool. Very um, nice, well, well, done. well done, Will. That was, that was fun. Now, that are we gonna fun. see that we're gonna see the second part to that in a little while? Yeah. So make sure, guys, you stick around to see the um, second part. Igor Saavedra. 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 Si, si, senor. He's from Santiago, Beautiful. Chile. Beautiful eight-string bass player. Eight-string eight bass. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Do four. As if they Very don't well. have enough problems <laughs> playing four. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Actually, you know what one of the best parts of tonight's going to be? What? One of the best parts, because we've got Here two we best go. parts. We've got young Ned. The best yes, form. we have. Oh, yeah. You ready, Ned? You ready, Ned? Is anybody could be? Ah, oh, good oh, boy. Good awesome. So... Everyone put your hands together for Ned. Yeah. Yeah. For world's me Or was it this a town? Cause every once in a while This world's got me down You know what I'm trying to say Is it look around The world we live in Is a simple 
the profound Can you please uh, help me by Cause I don't really know what's uh, going on Some grass is green Some is a pale brown But when you use a rap perception It's the same all around You know I got these mysteries to me I got these mysteries to me Can you please uh, help me by? Cause I don't really know what's uh, going on. Folks, 12 year old Ned Moran. How cool is that? I mean, even better than that. How cool is this? I oh, know. We've got Lindsay Fields and Mason. So, oh, no, we don't. We've got Lindsay Fields C and Mason. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got sure Fields C and Mason. C Fields C and Mason. 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 <laughs> How are you guys? Very good. Welcome to the show. Very well, thank you. Thanks. It's awesome. What are we doing, George? I don't know, what are we doing? Speechless. Oh, we we are, we speak, we're just... No, we are speechless. We are speechless. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of in awe. Oh, yeah, I am in awe. I'd just like to say immediately that, uh, Ned, we're going to break your kneecaps. That was too <laughs> fabulous, mate. I was That's actually going to say, I'm not going to repeat what um, Sam said to me before. So. <laughs> yeah, he's but, been um, playing for four years. I know. Four I've been years. playing for 54 and I can't get anywhere near that. <laughs> So what, what guitar did your parents buy you as a first guitar? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a twin duo from Japan. And if I hadn't had the courage that I obviously have, the, the strings were about half an inch off the fretboard. <laughs> And I'm going, I ain't giving up. I'm going to keep squeezing that thing. You would have come out with hands like the Hulk. Well, look at them. <laughs> oh, hound. <laughs> no, don't look at them. <laughs> Uh, we actually heard you guys sound check earlier today and it just sounds amazing. I mean, 
Here you guys can't do that again. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Is that why we recorded yeah. it? <laughs> we mime incredibly well. Oh, you mime pretty well? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, which is... Off. I'm, I'm, I'm gobsmacked, actually. I'm I'm gobsmacked. Especially on the scene Mr Lindsay Fields here. Yeah, I know. Nah, which is kind of cool. On. But, um, well, for a lot of people who don't know, I mean, we'll start with you, Lindsay. All right. I'm next you know? to you. Sorry? I'm next to you. Yeah, yes. that's correct. But um, obviously touring, we're playing and singing in John Farnham's band. And um, as, as long as I... Re- I mean, I've seen you in the band as long as I remember. But how long has that been? Uh, it's about 30 years now. Is it 30 years? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Would have oh, been... Scary. Scary? No, it would have been great. And, um, oh, it's been fantastic. Been fantastic. It's been a great adventure. Yeah, and also you, Sam. You also... You, you actually wrote a song on Whispering Jack? I did, yeah. yeah. I was briefly John's um, MD before LI, he joined LIB. Right. And, um, no, so I'm very grateful that he did that song. It was a, it was a great song for me and my family. And uh, he still sings it, which is lovely. Oh, that's great. Mm. Especially if you're getting the royalties for it. <laughs> uh, well, we're Keep not, singing it. We're not back in the 80s, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been great. It has changed, it has changed. <laughs> and um, we've got Mr Robin Hood over there. We have to use that... Um, but I really am Robin Hood. Oh. You are? <laughs> <laughs> George, George, is lo- George is looking at me like, what's with the Robin Hood thing? Yeah. He's from Notting- not- uh, Nottingham, UK. Yeah. Which is, you weren't too far from the Sherwood Forest there, as you were Correct. telling me. Correct, yeah, it's about 2Ks out of town. Wow. From Nottingham. Yeah, and that, that, I mean, that, therein lies the legend uh, of, of the whole Robin Hood uh, story and legend and what became about several movies and books uh, inclusive. So um, there, there was an actual fact, the Robin of Loxley and all that kind of bizzo. But uh, anyway, that's, I, I kind of fit it in later, yes. much later. You didn't get any royalties then? Yeah. No. Yeah, and yeah, on yeah. our next tour, he's wearing the green tight. <laughs> <laughs> is that every week on stage? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Same oh, pair yeah, of yeah, tights. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah now, it's, a, it's a plot. You had a band called uh, Tour de Force, which yes. helped in your songwriting. Um, then Sam invited you to play with Brian Cadd's touring band. Yes. Is that how you guys all met? Or? Oh, oh, no, actually, oh. We'd, we'd had a band uh, in 78, Eight. maybe. Yeah. Um, I'd come back from Canada with Chris Stockley from the Dingoes and uh, we put a band together called Stockley, C and Mason. You'll notice a thread here that we're using our names because um, our view is that we could call ourselves the Terminators or the whatever, but at least if we call ourselves our names, people know who the hell we are and they either come or stay away, you know, yep. on that basis. Anyway, so Glenn and I, Glenn and I actually met in 1969. Is this a three-hour show? <laughs> <laughs> um, but Glenn had just come over from New Zealand with a band, and I met him the first night at Caesar's place in King Street. But unbeknownst to Glenn, the cup of tea that had been offered to him wasn't actually just tea. <laughs> so Glenn had to depart the scene. I said, G'day, I met all the band, and Glenn didn't stay. I don't know why. He was on and, a, and half the band, much later, didn't yeah, stay either. On another planet. So it became a jam night, but not with us in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, we, we hooked Glenn into doing this. That was at, at the Stockless Sam Mason thing, but I should say that through Brian Cadd, which uh, is where we also met Lindsay, uh, we were up at Corumban, which is in uh, the Gold Coast. And one night after a very interesting gig, Lindsay and Glenn and I were singing, and we just looked at each other and we went, wow, this is not too shabby. <laughs> and we've, we just said, so don't you reckon? We, I mean, ever since then we've had this instinctive uh, understanding of where our voices fit in the blend, you know, and it's just oh, been... That's so 40 years ago. Yeah, 1932. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but it's, it's true. Yeah, pre-war. And then we, we, we revisited that when Glenn moved down from Sydney mm. and we ended up having a dinner on uh, at my place and we sat on the back deck and just 
collected the guitars up and started to sing again. And there was just one memorable moment where it's, well, my wife said to us, I think it's one o'clock in the morning, you should probably just be quiet and think of the neighbours. And Jeez, I'd love to be and, your neighbour. <laughs> no, well, Sam actually said, oh, well, f the neighbours. <laughs> They should be paying for this, and all the support started <laughs> ringing out from around the neighbourhood. Oh, really? And everybody was sitting in their back garden or on their roofs with a bottle of wine or a cup of tea, enjoying it. You know, and, and so. Geez, I definitely would be too. Oh, <laughs> no, it was fantastic. It was we enjoyed fun. it too. Yeah, I mean, look, we still love what we do, which is is singing and playing. I mean, that's the basis. We're not doing this for any other reason. You wouldn't. I mean, I'm looking at Ned, for example. You can tell he's got the passion, and uh, God bless him. I hope he has a long life playing yeah. music, yeah. you know, because it's the best fun you can have standing up. Do you notice a difference in the industry from obviously when you guys first started 40 years ago to the turnover of music now? I think their facial expression just yeah, said it. I was going to say, <laughs> probably no need to answer that one. <laughs> yeah. There's no change in the finance. That's exactly no, what no. it was like 40 years ago, and it still is. Well, actually not really, but no. I, I, you know, I, I really, I don't want to be an old fogey. I am an old fogey, but I, <laughs> I, I just reckon hip hop has made it very hard for songwriters to come out and write a song that's got interesting changes in it because songwriting has devolved into this kind of let's play over this loop and the, the, technique of the musicians. I mean, I'm looking at the house band, these guys have got chops up the wazoo that they probably, you know, like 90% of the time they don't get to use because it's a, you know, that's the loop, let's play this chord for five minutes and whatever we're going to do over the top. It's not, to me, there's great hip hop, great rap, but 90% of it's just not music to me. No, Fogey. Fogey time. No, yeah. no, no, I think I'm with you there. Definitely with you there. Now, Lindsay, you also, um, you're also executive producer for the Spirit of Christmas charity CD? Yes. And how long have you been doing that? This is the 25th one. Wow. 25 years. Wow. And the last. It's the last so one, isn't it? So you get out there and buy it because uh, after this, who knows? Yeah. But Maya decided that this will be the last one. Oh, 20, 25 years is a good run. It's a hell of a good run. <laughs> it's isn't a it? great it's run. We've raised nearly nine million bucks, and cool. I think that is oh. Thank you. But there's 200 different artists wow. over those 25 years. 300 different songs because we can put out whole albums of Silent Night. Yes. The different versions <laughs> of different it. Different versions of it. Of, of, of everything. It's fantastic. Cause it, um, You've got nine million in your super anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Man. But the funny thing about it is, it's like the Spirit of Christmas CD, and um, I don't know if you remember back in the 80s, I think it was 86, somewhere there, with Bert Newton, he brought out a CD called Spirit of Christmas, mm -hmm. um, which was a charity thing too. And that was with the... Um, my old school band, which is Demony Park High School. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Beautiful. that we did that album. Yeah. But funny enough is the trombone player from that band was on Farnham's band, which is Lex Tia. Uh, you hello, remember Lex? Lex? You sure to be watching <laughs> <you>. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's a funny bloke, yeah, isn't he? He is. He's a great guy, but... Um, Good yeah. golfer. Sorry? Good golfer. Oh, he's into his golf. He still yeah. is. Yeah. And, you know, I still see Lex and... Um, I, you would have known Tebow. Yes. Yeah, Tebow. We're all from the same band. That's oh, the same really? orchestra, yeah. Right. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, wow. Can I get your autograph, Pino? I know. <laughs> I kind of fall back with certain things, don't I? But um, <laughs> I just thought it was, I just thought it was you know, coincidental. Spirit of course, Christmas, and I was in the spirit yeah. of Christmas. No worries. Now, yeah. Glenn, you obviously um, went away for a little while yeah. and headed over to Chile to become an alpaca farmer. <laughs> no. uh, I, I was looking at this piece of paper before. It uh -oh. has some really interesting moments on it yep. and certainly questions. But no, no alpacas, no chili, no. I no. Mean, um, around about, uh, where are we? Uh, I was in Chain after I, I, came to, I came to Australia, or returned to Australia in 69, okay? And with a band called The Rebels, or Larry's Rebels, as it previously was known in, in uh, here, because they visited two of Australia three times. That was anyway, with, uh, John Williams? Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, William. Yeah. Oh, dude, definitely. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I came back with those guys, and uh, 
shortly thereafter the band folded, I actually joined Chain. And they'd come down from Sydney after Wendy um, Saddington had left as a four piece, and I joined that. So we, uh, we produced a, a, an album and a bunch of stuff, and uh, only lasted for me for about, I don't know, 14 months or something. And th after that, I disappeared. I went over to the UK, and uh, that's when they had the <laughs> their most productive period and most famous, which is towards the blues and black and blue and all that with Matt Taylor. Yep. And then I came back again, and I was up in Darwin, and it was like that sort of blues brother thing about, you know, let's get the band get back, back together, together, right? So I get this call, guy, we, we're going to get the band doing the same thing. So another album and so forth. But I think everybody had sort of gone uh, different musical ways. And um, so that only lasted again about eight or nine months. And, uh, and I joined Ariel then. And so, the, you know, the history sort of kept on. These moving. are like the best of the best Aussie bands that every name that you keep yelling out. It's like Look, fantastic. you know, it's, it's strangely enough, I mean, Sam and I have discussed this stuff in the past and we all know these people. And I hope, that, you know, the audience out there does as well. I mean, Michael's one of those really endearing, long-term musicians that's really created stuff in Victoria for, for decades. But, um, you know, he was... Mike Rudd. Yeah, Mike, Mike Rudd. Rudd. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was an interesting time, and that was a great, great fun too, great band, and a lot of, spawned a lot of albums and different things. And uh, Mike's still rocking now, still doing it. Fantastic. He's not watching. We've been giving up the wind-up. <laughs> <line up. laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's, well, that's all right. enough about that, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is great. Thanks, guys. We're, we're, Thank you very, very much. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's coming pleasure. down and um, having a chat with us, even though we've been two mumbling idiots. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, no, that's, no. Just, that's just us, Pino. I know, it yeah. is. It's pretty normal. Yeah, it is. I'm looking so forward to you guys on stage. When are we doing the next take? Sorry, the, the next one. That was take one. <laughs> Tyrone's got his clapper there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that was a good rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, are we recording now? <laughs> no, that's all good. But uh, looking forward to seeing you guys on stage, which is going to be awesome. No worries. Okay. So are please, we, hey, sorry, what? we'll sorry, do it again. George. Please, everyone, put your hands together for Field C and Mason. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're actually going to go to our second part of our base day clip. Yes. That's with Igor Saavedra. That's with Igor Saavedra. Okay. I'm here with Igor Saavedra, and Igor has come all the way from Santiago, Chile. And um, Igor is a pioneer of playing eight-string bass. I don't know anybody else that plays eight-string bass anywhere. Well, there are now. I've been playing uh, eight-string bass for 20 years already. So in this process, now you have more, of course, more players after that. So there is a community of extended range bass players that are 8, 9, 10, 11, even 12 strings. Now aside from playing the 8 string bass, you also have designed a, a particular thing in, 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 with regards to your bass that you play, which is, is now like an industry standard for you. Um, yeah. Tell us about it. Well, uh, the... The actual string bass I have now is a Mark uh, Mark V already. You know, it's been a yeah. process, but from Mark III, all my basses are detachable. You can detach the wings and the headstock, and uh, so it gets a very short little thing that you can put in any overhead. I did I did it because of having after many problems on, on the gates, yeah, yeah. and uh, now I'm starting with a new sponsor, which is a Japanese uh, brand, which is called Dragonfly Basses. It's Top notch. Totani yeah. Tatsuaki is a famous luthier. He used to work for Aria Pro in the, back in the days. Yeah. And uh, we are like uh, approaching that uh, final result, and uh, it's going to be ready like in four months. And uh, it's going to be available for ordering. I mean, it's, uh, you will be able to order, but in le with less strings if you want four, five, six. Yeah. Which is cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, now, I, I did some research on you, and in 97, you were the f first bass player to play Flight of the Bumblebee without a pick. Yeah, yeah, that was 97. I was living in the States. I live uh, in, in California from 95 to 2000 almost. And I decided to, because I was developing my technique, which is called vectorial synthesis technique, it's a different technique for the right hand. I've been working on for 25 years already, and I wanted to prove it. So I said, which is a good <laughs> tune or track to prove it? And I said, that's it, Flight of 
of the Bumblebee, that, that'll be it. So I recorded that and it came out very well. When you're performing here, I've been asking everybody about their performance, about what, what their mindset is before they go and perform. So, for example, um, some of the other guys have played in you know, other big arenas where they've played with big artists and so on. And, and I asked them, what was your mindset before you stepped up on stage? Mm-hmm. What's your mindset before you do a performance? Like today, for example, you're playing with, well, Nobody. it's a room full of bass players, <laughs> which is probably one of the hardest things. But um, what's your mindset before you get up on stage? What, what do you think? Well, in my case, as you know, I am a solo concert bass player. That's what I do. It's not like uh, uh, I do occasionally. I, that's the way I go, I, but not from ever. I mean, since ever. I started uh, playing uh, with many bands. So now that I do solo concerts, I really like, uh, I'm very exposed. You know, a solo bass player, like I, I don't use loops, I don't use tracks. I don't use anything, it's just me and my bass, and, and you are very exposed, so you need to relax a, a lot, and that relaxation and state of mind, as you say, starts since you wake up, really. Every, I always say, every day I have to play, it's a special day, it's a, like a sacred day, and uh, I wake up and I try to make this day the best day I can since I wake up, not like five minutes before going on stage, in fact, I don't warm up. I don't move my fingers before going on stage. I never do that. I don't need it. If I am relaxed, if my body is relaxed, my hands are relaxed, I'm warm, and I just go on stage and play. Being at the caliber that you are, how much practice would you put in, like, on, on an average day of, of Igor Zavedra? What would you do? Well, that's a good question because it, it goes uh, in, a, in different stages uh, through your career. When I started from that very day, I remember I studied like 17 hours a day for like first year, second year, about 15, 14 hours a day because I was desperate. I knew I started old. So uh, then it goes down because you start working more and playing more, but you are keeping the amount of hours steady anyway because you, you are just changing the way you play. Less practice, more on live stage. But at this stage of my career, I still practice an average of uh, four to five hours daily. And sometimes I I wake up and and I say, I'm not playing today. I will just go out and see the birds or whatever. And uh, because I always say, if the music would be only about, uh, sorry, life would be only about music, what are you gonna play for? What is gonna be the content in your music? So you need also, some days not to play, go out and leave yeah. and bring that back into your music. Yeah. If you don't do that, well, you're empty. Yeah. Yeah. You're just moving your fingers. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So Igor, thank you so much for, for, for having a chat with us. Um, and we'll actually, I'll send you the stream of this interview over in Chile so that you can, you can actually see it. So I'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep in touch. So, and um, enjoy the rest of the show. I will. Okay, Bye. see you later. <laughs> you know, we were just talking about how, how hard that was for me because I was holding the mic and it was in the wrong angle for me. You know, my hand I'm not sure we can put that up there, Will. Oh, no, I can't hold this really mic. can. I can't <laughs> hold this mic anymore. Hang on. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, so everybody, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big warm welcome to our guests tonight, Field C, C and Mason. Mason. Yeah, boys. Push. 
Mason, everybody, put your hands together. Hey, that was Thanks awesome. for having us, folks. Awesome. Wow. I'm almost as speechless as the interview. <laughs> 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 I haven't been that nervous in years. I know, it's been a bit like that, isn't it? What a great show. George. What an absolutely fantastic show. It's yeah, little, been a great show. Little Ned. Yeah, great Ned. music. I could have sort of called him Fantastic. Okay. It was great. It was fantastic. Phil C. Mason. Yep. Can't get much better than that. Who we got on next week? Those harmonies. Who we got on next week? We can edit this later. Uh, it's all right. I have caught you off guard. Do you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> I do know. I do. Did Rocky Rabbi come? <laughs> We're just having a discussion. <laughs> Did Rocky Rabbi? Is he still coming? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, cool. He's yeah. just got a broken so. arm. No, he, he injured himself. So. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. next week we've got Delacoma and Rocky Ravik. Wow. Yeah. Also, we've been out and about up. somewhere. Oh, yes, we have. Yes. <laughs> Thank God Tyrone's going to run the, gonna roll the credits over the top of... Um, Was it a different fast food Phil restaurant? Phil Mason, hey? Different fast food restaurant this time, or...? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what we're doing. 
Yeah. Uh, we better time to wrap it up. Right, we're, no, we're wrapped up. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you. See you, guys. If anyone's not doing anything on Monday, we're going to um, Madison's in West Meadows to film something. They've got $15 chicken parmigianas. Is that a strip club or pizza? No, it's not a strip club. Why does it sound club. like one? Because Pino's wife works there. <laughs> hey, what are you trying to say? <laughs> You just said, does Madison sound like a strip club? His house would be oh. much bigger, mate. I can't take you guys anywhere. By now. <laughs> can't take you guys absolutely And anywhere. we're going to thank the house band too. The house yes. band, they're awesome. How do we forget our house band? Yeah, yeah. And look at Max, he's pulling his hair out. I'm going to say it really quietly. Uh, so... Until next week. Next week's going to be a big week. So, and once again, we, we want an audience. So when we're performing, we do want to have a live audience. So please come down to Musicland in Faulkner. Every now um, you kidnap people. It's free. Drag them down. It's free. And bring your friends. If you want, you can organise. And, can we, order. Was, and we was buying pizzas. <laughs> and he'll pick you up from your place. So just sit, <laughs> text in your address. Will's uh, got a minivan. With a photo. <laughs> <laughs> so until next week, we'll have fun, up. enjoy, and um, we'll catch you around.